they got on the train to um, go to Algoma and uh, the train used to come through Willisville. He got, uh, as they were going through here, they got off the train here and, it's, and my, the story is he stayed here for about two months. He just fell in love with this country. He, they started, he, they as in him and my mother started camping out here in the 20s and then in 1935 he bought the property, 43 acres, which was surrendered Indian Reserve, 43 acres for $43. When he comes into La Cloche, the village of Willisville isn't, isn't built yet. And that happened because of wartime and that gorgeous hill at the end of Fruit Lake was taken out for mining materials. And he was all over photographing that and, and um, I think wanting to express a sense of concern about um, the impact that these activities are having on the land. And then when he makes an application for the purchase of the land for the cottage, uh, he declares that he really needs this because, you know, his family needs to be more comfortable and not have to camp anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think that the Cobalt trip might have been um, a family camping trip. The silver mine painting that he did, mm -hmm. uh, the major painting that he did from that um, that trip. The known history now is that he went by himself without other artists. Mm -hmm. However, my mom would have been nine years old at that time. I expect they might have they might have camped up there together. Yeah. But we do know that he was there in. September of 1930 and I believe there was just the one trip yeah but I think if we look at the industrial scenes that he did like cobalt and the famous painting of Sudbury and nipple belt we can see that there's a, an environmental concern there mm -hmm. that he's troubled by an interest in the, the industrial landscape built landscape and the untouched landscape all were working together mm -hmm. for him they were all um, subjects that he was he was interested in attending to. Mm 